A couple of months ago, I watched a video by a YouTuber named Jarek the Gaming Dragon about Syndicate from 2012. You see, I don't actually hate this guy, he makes a lot of reviews for really underrated and obscure shooter games, and they're actually pretty good videos, but this one really caught my eye. Throughout this whole review, he's incredibly negative, and the title boldly calls Syndicate EA's most forgettable game. As I watched further and further through this video, I couldn't help but notice that the gameplay actually looked kinda cool, and the game had incredible visuals. A couple of statements this guy made also stood out. There is so much bloom in this game. At times, it's blinding. This is something I remember distinctly about Syndicate back in the day. So it's at least a good thing that the guns are pretty satisfying to shoot. These have nice recoil, they sound nice and punchy, and the designs are quite unique. Bro, this bloom, I cannot see a thing. So, we have impressive visuals, intense bloom, and satisfying, punchy weapons. Those just so happen to also be pretty prominent aspects in my favorite video game of all time, Mirror's Edge from 2008. Don't tell me you can't see it. I truly think that the original Mirror's Edge is one of the most beautiful games ever made, and this game comes surprisingly close to that level of beauty. If you just added some extra color to these cities, there'd be no denying it. And goddamn, some of the screenshots and gameplay that I've seen from the co-op mode of this game look incredibly similar to Mirror's Edge aesthetically. That was it. I decided that I was gonna get this game and give it a shot. So, I beat the game over the course of two days. What were my thoughts? Most forgettable game, my ass! This game is baller as fuck! And Jarek's review is way too negative. Most of the other reviews of this game aren't so glowing either, so I decided that I'd make a video myself and give my thoughts on the game. Now, if you don't know already, Syndicate's supposed to be a first-person shooter reboot of the old Syndicate series, which were isometric action strategy games set in a similar world to this reboot. Let's get this part out of the way first. If you were a big fan of the old Syndicate games, you probably aren't gonna like this game. It's a super bland, generic first-person shooter from the 2010s that was going along with all the standard FPS conventions and blah blah blah, whatever it is you wanna hear. Now that all the annoying people have heard what they want and have clicked off of the video, let's talk about what this game actually has to offer. It's the year 2069, and the world's nations can no longer keep up with the rapidly advancing megacorporations that have formed. 
These corporations have assembled their own private militaries and are now hell-bent on constantly attacking each other in bids to weaken their competitors and increase their own influence throughout the world. And hey, this is starting to sound kind of similar to that other cyberpunk game that I just covered. I don't even give a shit if this kind of a universe can be seen as generic or whatever. I will just endlessly find this kind of shit cool. Mega corporations duking it out with special agents and military grunts. In Syndicate, you're placed in the boots of one of these agents, working for one of the biggest corporations, Eurocorp. This game will take you through quite a few diverse environments in this world, and it sets up some seriously cool fights with well fleshed out bad guys for you to battle. This game might even have one of the hey, most badass opening levels you ever. You start by beating the ever-loving shit out of someone holding you captive. And after that, I really knew that I was in for something special the second I busted through this door and jumped on this guy, pushing him and his friend down a fucking stairwell. That shit is epic. Moving into the gameplay first, Syndicate has incredible weapons. Almost every gun in this game has an extremely satisfying punch, and most of them have great secondary abilities that make almost every single weapon very useful. And all of the weapon designs themselves are also original and quite unique. By far, my favorite weapon was the Kusanagi ACR-10. This is one of the first guns you get in the game, and immediately the gunshots are earth-shattering and it has a secondary fire mode that lets you shoot through walls. I can vividly remember picking this thing up for the first time and having to pause for a second in awe of the sheer power of it. Most of the sound effects are incredibly punchy and the animations are equally weighty. If you're wondering why I keep saying almost every gun, that's because unfortunately this game actually has one of the weakest shotguns in any game I've ever played, and that's a damn shame because picking up a shotgun is usually one of the highlights of every first person shooter. It was incredibly anticlimactic picking the shotgun up for the first time. With how awesome all of the other guns in the game are, I was expecting this to be one of the best guns in the game, but it actually takes quite a few shots just to kill somebody, and the animations and sounds aren't even that great. Excluding the shotgun, though, every other weapon is great. One of my favorite things is that you're able to shoot while running with the pistol, and the animation for shooting while on the move is super badass. I actually always like these cool one-handed shooting animations in games, and being able to shoot while on the run. On later playthroughs, I decided to start using the Bullhammer Revolver late into the game, and let me tell you, rushing into combat, shooting at enemies one-handed, and popping heads is one of the most satisfying things in this game. Moving forward, the level design is actually pretty good. Enemies will often have varied areas to spawn in and come from, and levels flow very well. The battle arenas that you get put into become increasingly challenging throughout the game, and enemies will surprise you from unique directions and create genuinely intense firefights with gunshots echoing throughout the rooms that will really keep you on your toes. Gore, animations, and excellent voice acting make these dynamic and dramatic firefights even more engaging, as enemies' heads will explode and the blood spewing out will even glow on your dart overlay. Or you can set people on fire and they'll fall to the ground and scream and writhe in pain. Enemy grunts will yell obscenities and dive onto their sides from cover shooting wildly doing combat rolls and ambushing you. Just the normal death animations of enemies twirling to the ground are super satisfying. And just when you take your focus off of one spot, an enemy will flank behind you. Battle arenas are incredibly chaotic in a super fun way, and it will really put your skills to the test. You see, at first, due to a few issues and a lack of knowing when to use the dart overlay and the abilities, I had a much more mixed opinion on this game. This game isn't available to buy straight off of the Origin store, so this game may as well be abandonware. So I obtained the game the only way I knew how. 
for some reason, this version of the game had terrible mouse smoothing or something. It felt like I was emulating an Xbox 360 controller's joystick with my mouse, which made the game's combat feel very slow and clunky. Because of this clunkiness, I was dying very often, and I barely even had time to think about when I could use the suicide, backfire, and persuade abilities effectively. Eventually, I figured out that I could actually buy a key for a copy of Syndicate on Origin off of G2A, and all of a sudden the mouse issue I had was just gone. No extra settings or fixes, it's just perfect now. Immediately, my gameplay went from standing around in the open with assault rifles having to rely on auto-aim to hit anything at all to running around hip-firing a revolver shooting people's limbs off. There are still a couple of improvements I think could be made. For starters, just straight up buff the submachine gun and shotgun, and I think it also would have been very helpful if there was some kind of grenade trajectory display for both thrown and launched grenades as the TAR-39's underbarrel grenade launcher can be sort of hard to use as the trajectory of its grenades is somewhat unpredictable. Additionally, it would be kinda cool if they coded the AI to move towards enemies that you packed to commit suicide. Kinda like how the Marines in Half-Life would just happen to run into your trip mines every time you place one down, heavily encouraging full usage of your arsenal. All of the abilities are still fairly useful without this, though. They also really could have added in quite a few more abilities. I mean... There's only three abilities, and you're this badass, cybernetically enhanced commando. This game came out in 2012. Yeah, this game looks absolutely amazing, even today. It's genuinely like if you took the raw graphical fidelity of Battlefield 3 or 4, and mixed that with the aesthetic prowess of Mirror's Edge. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. The Bloom. Oh come on, it's not that bad. The Bloom is obviously a stylistic choice, and I actually think it fits very well. The best comparison here is, of course, Mirror's Edge. That game had a very similar aesthetic to this game, and it cranked the Bloom up quite a bit as well. The way this makes the already bright white buildings glow on the screen is just unforgettable, and it's really just as cool in this game as well. The art style of Mirror's Edge is one of the major contributing reasons to why it's my favorite game ever, so you know damn well that gives me a good reason to love Syndicate. What makes this even better is that Syndicate has great variety in its level locations. Going from the futuristic New York City, to Los Angeles, to an offshore oil rig, the slums of New York, and eventually duking it out through buildings and on rooftops. By far, my favorite point in this game is when you first arrive in New York City, where the parallels to Mirror's Edge are blinding, and you're greeted with this vast cityscape with a pinkish glow coming off of everything. This cityscape disappears into the fog with flying cars buzzing around the buildings. Every location in this game has this same sleek, bright, and futuristic look to it, obviously excluding the slums. The many different beautiful locations you battle through in this game really elevate the gameplay. If this game had a boring setting, it would be an unbearable snooze fest, but because each area has its own completely unique feel, Syndicate still stands out as a great game to me. I can still remember the moment I realized that I was in the slums of New York City, realizing this game was not only going to let me fight through the shiny, futuristic cityscapes, but also the impoverished ghettos of this setting. It was a moment in which I truly felt a connection between myself and this game's world. All I could do was go around taking screenshots of the places in the beginning of the level that I thought looked cool. Syndicate feels like a true modern reimagining of old-school cyberpunk. The original Syndicate games already had some of the best cyberpunk atmospheres in the 90s, and this game modernizes a lot of the aesthetics from the original game in a genuine and interesting way. I mean, this game came out in 2012, and corporate agents still wear trench coats? In fact, they actually redesigned the Eurocorp agents surprisingly faithfully to the original games, with trench coats, face masks, and cybernetic eyes. Where this game modernizes, I'd say it actually makes these designs even cooler, adding corporate logos to these trench coats, some tactical belts with pouches, and different fabrics and patterns around the coats. 
Other soldier designs in this game are cool as hell. The main grunt design of Eurocorp is one of the first soldier designs you'll see in this game, and it's by far my favorite. These guys have standard combat helmets, but they also have these super badass visors with computer interfaces that cover their entire face, glow orange, and show some kind of heads-up display type information. Moving down, they've got shoulder pads, which give them a bulkier silhouette, and body armor with a chest ring laden with magazine pouches. They have gloves on, and it looks like they have a balaclava on under their helmet, so you can't see any skin whatsoever. Soldiers of the Aspari Corporation, which is notably a Japanese corporation, look like modernized samurai with a very intimidating silhouette. Cayman Global soldiers have a similar style to Eurocorp with no skin showing. However, these guys look like discount Halo Spartans with white ballistic armor on black uniforms. I'm going to be covering some spoilers here. The story isn't that important to the game, but you can skip this part if you'd like. This game's actual story is pretty mediocre. It revolves around you, Agent Miles Kilo of Eurocorp, a massive megacorporation which is constantly fighting with other corporations for relevance and even to keep its own scientists and technology to itself. Throughout the game, you'll come to realize just how corrupt Eurocorp is and eventually betray them. The corporate warfare aspect of this game is actually really cool. However, unfortunately, most of this is pushed aside by a more interpersonal conflict between you, another Eurocorp agent named Jules Merritt, and a woman named Lily Drawl, a female scientist described by your boss as one of the brightest scientific minds of her generation. Most of this interpersonal conflict is somewhat interesting, but it's really not as cool as all the corporate politics going on around you. I do really like how Agent Mara is characterized as a maniac who gives zero shits and just executes random civilians. It actually sticks with the themes of the original Syndicate games where civilian casualties can be plentiful at the hands of corporate agents. As you progress through the game, a relationship will start to form between you and Lily Drawl, and Agent Merritt will constantly get in the way of this relationship because he's a sociopathic maniac who gives no fucks about human emotion. Essentially what happens here is, the first half of this game is you dealing with Lily who flirts with other corporations which Eurocorp doesn't like, and even gets kidnapped at one point. Before before the story shifts to you finding out that as a child, you were kidnapped by Eurocorp, and your parents were killed for you to be taken and turned into a super soldier. From this point forward, you team up with Lily Drawl and end up baiting another corporation, Cayman Global, to stage a full hostile takeover of Eurocorp. In the confusion of this battle between Eurocorp and Cayman, you and Lily ascend the Eurocorp headquarters and eventually kill Agent Merritt in a boss battle, before killing the CEO of Eurocorp. I don't think this story is that bad, but it's rather short, and like I said, it kind of gets in the way of objectively cooler corporate warfare. But it kind of reminds me of Mirror's Edge, where it could have just used a little bit more time in the oven and it could have turned out great. This game's single player story mode only takes about 4 or 5 hours to beat, however it's actually super replayable. Yes, I know that sounds more like a cop-out than anything, and usually I don't buy it at all whenever somebody says a game is replayable. It just sounds like an excuse for lazy game development. In a way, yes, this is kind of an excuse, but in another way, this game is genuinely fun to experiment with in the single-player mode. Only through replaying this game several times did I get better and better at using the hacking abilities, and I found myself having fun with different weapons. There's also a screen at the end of missions that scores you for the amount of headshots you get, how many enemies you hack, and other things. Something I found very surprising is just how well written the lore is and the collectibles you pick up throughout the game. Generally, I don't care about collectible pickups or random little lore tidbits, but these are actually written in an interesting way, like wiki pages and entries on corporations and their origin stories, as well as backgrounds on weapons that you pick up throughout the game. As a gun nut, this really drew me into the universe of the game. When I actually know about the development of a weapon I pick up and it's not even unrealistic, using these documents you pick up, you can actually understand what drives these mega corporations and why they're constantly fighting. This makes these corporate entities more than just faceless bad guys, and more like organizations that are part of a larger world. 
If more emphasis was placed on the ideologies of these corporations and exploring the complexities of the world like the previous game I covered, Ace Combat 3, instead of exploring this very shallow personal story, this could have been a seriously amazing game, and the foundation is literally there. You have these really cool, warring megacorporations alongside rebel groups forming in the ghettos of this futuristic New York City, and a stirring revolution that you only get to see the beginning of at the end of this game. If the political conflicts between these corporations were a larger element of the story over any personal conflicts, this could have been a masterpiece of a story rather than just a passable one at best. Oh, and also the ambient music that plays in the menu as you read through the collectibles you pick up made it a much more comfy experience. That being said, this game's soundtrack is alright. It's nothing crazy, but it has a couple of ambient tracks that are very nice, and yes, this game does have Skrillex in it, but it's a completely original composition that was made for Syndicate, and it actually isn't too bad. It sounds pretty cool when it's played while you're fighting one of the bosses. Probably the greatest use of music in this game is when you have to fight through a nightclub while people scream running out of the building, and some kind of J-pop dance music is playing in the background as enemy soldiers from a Spari Corporation flood the room. Predictive tactical assessment. They will deploy a rear guard. Expect armored units. It's actually a super fun and dynamic shootout, and one of the most memorable moments from this game. This was the point where I really realized that there was something special about this game. This kind of design anywhere in a video game screams passion and creativity. When the developers can take an already cool shootout in a game and elevate it to a whole new memorable level with a mixture of music and setting, this game is awesome. Syndicate's greatest problems are its length and its shallow plot, even if the replayability can help make up for the first issue. But what if I told you, there's actually a completely separate mode with nine more missions, potentially even more replayability, even more badass locations, and a larger focus on corporate warfare? That's right, Syndicate's co-op mode was actually one of the modes from the game that received the most praise when it was released, yet it's one of the most overlooked modes now. I'm not sure any of the people who have reviewed this game have given its co-op mode any kind of analysis. At first, I assumed it was because the game's servers were down, but after I got the game on Origin, I realized that the co-op mode actually worked perfectly fine. So what does Syndicate's co-op have to offer? It's okay. Look, there's no getting around this. The co-op mode is pretty rough around the edges. Each character only has a few voice lines, so every time you go down, you'll just hear them repeatedly yell out, I'M DOWN! I NEED YOU TO REBOOT MY SYSTEM! Sometimes when I spawned in, certain specific items like red dot sights or even whole guns would just be invisible. The levels are not scaled for the amount of players you have at all, so sometimes you'll have to go back and forth to bring items to their extract point. And on some levels, checkpoints are kinda scarce, and if you happen to die, you'll have to restart the entire level. It's a shame, because this really is more than just a tacked-on mode. There's a whole progression system that's pretty unique, and there's also a cool clan system where you can create your own syndicate with your friends. The progression system actually takes inspiration from the older games, and so you actually have to research weapon upgrades and hacking ability upgrades by getting points and co-op missions. And this mode is actually extremely replayable too, with three different difficulty options that all scale and add more boss encounters and grunts to fight. You definitely don't want to mess too much with these difficulty options if you don't have a squad of four, each with some upgrades, though, as just the normal difficulty can get pretty hard with only two players, and restarting over and over again can get pretty frustrating. You can also play this mode solo, but it's really not practical at all. The nine co-op levels are all pretty varied, and some even introduce new enemies that aren't even in the campaign mode. 
These missions are all pretty short and sweet. I wish they could have been a bit longer. These aren't like whole Left 4 Dead campaigns. Each of these missions are more like self-contained little hit-and-run events where you attack an enemy corporation, steal resources or assets from them, and get out. It's really a shame these missions aren't any longer or more in-depth, as the devs clearly wanted to make this more than just a cherry on top for the campaign. What is there is actually pretty fun and worth playing, even if it is pretty jank. But good luck managing to get four players in a squad. Nobody plays this game anymore, and I'm not sure how many keys for this game are even still floating around, as there really aren't many sellers on G2A. If you can get three or four players in a squad to play though, I think these missions are definitely worth replaying a couple of times to get through most of the progression system and experience all of the difficulty options. This game's cyberpunk setting is truly awesome, and it's a damn shame that it almost never ever receives any love. If this game would have been more well received, I can see in my head a sequel with a much longer campaign, potentially better writing, more cool abilities, and one that fully explores every aspect of this badass world. A sequel to this game could literally be one of the coolest cyberpunk games ever made. It's a real shame that this is a pipe dream and the Syndicate IP has laid completely dormant ever since this game released. EA completely abandoned this series, and its developers split off and formed a new studio which would go on to make Wolfenstein the New Order, and... If we just pretend that the games that came after it don't exist, that's great for them. The co-op mode could have been really awesome if it had longer, more in-depth missions and better scaled difficulty for how many players you have in a squad, or AI teammates that fill in similar to Left 4 Dead. Every time I play this game, I can't help but feel like there was really supposed to be more. You have all this written lore, and at the end of each mission in the campaign, you get some weird cryptic thoughts that presumably come from Kilo, the completely silent protagonist. He says Robocop stuff like, I am a weapon, command me. It makes me wonder if there was supposed to be some deeper moral questioning here about creating human super soldiers, and the deconstruction of the human mind into nothing more than a weapon. What is there in Syndicate is certainly pretty good. I can't express enough that this is a deeply slept on game, and absolutely deserves more positive attention than it ever got. Even when I was playing this game with the bad mouse smoothing issue, I still found myself enjoying this game a lot. It's rather fun, and the locations and set pieces make it an awesome experience. With all of that being said, go check out Syndicate, man.